negativity out of my face. I want positivity in my space. Today's going to be a good day. Yo, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Manero with J-Man Speaks, coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in The Rock. It's the ROC, and we don't stop. And we have a very exciting day for you. We are talking about advanced business planning strategies with one of our good friends, Mr. Christopher Abbasi, coming to us from sunny Florida. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, can you see how nice it is over here? I bet you didn't know that the topography of Florida was so mountainous. Um, yeah, that's uh, you live right by it in, in an island. I'm <laughs> uh, glad to see you made it out of the hurricane unscathed for the most part, right? You did. It's, we, I mean, we had beautiful weather on the east coast. The west coast got pulverized. I was just on yeah. with uh, one of our colleagues over there. That's, uh, I mean, it's taken taken out they were talking about casualties and stuff i didn't even know about that stuff man yeah yeah i'm, do, I'm doing a phonathon this afternoon uh to benefit the red cross That's awesome. uh, yeah so raise some money what are we talking about business strategies advanced business strategies because i feel like so many people so many times talk about the basic business plan and it's time to level up mofos am i right <laughs> Uh, it, it is. Well, you know, and even before you go any further, so many people every year make a business plan, and then they don't follow it. So there's the execution factor as well. So uh, it's, uh, I mean, somebody asked me this year, hey, are you going to do the same business plan you did last year? And I'm like, well, you know, business is, has anything changed in terms of the business? But yeah, it's always a different version of what we already know. So the execution is where, uh, you know, is where the struggle is, I guess, right? The struggle, baby. Where where do you want to start, though? Where should we start? I have a whiteboard. Hold on, I want to use the whiteboard. You, <laughs> I like you always. You always try your toys out on me. I love it. I. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, make, make sure it goes in focus, man. You need a good light. Oh, let me turn my light on. I forgot to look. Oh, isn't that better? Let there be light. Oh, and there we go. Okay, now you can hear me. Yes. So, I can Chris, read it. I can hear you. Where should, where should we begin? <laughs> You're in the corner. I'm over here. This is exciting stuff. First step. You're so much fun. Well, okay. So, first step. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> first oh, steps uh, yeah well so uh with any before you make any first step with any business uh you want to begin with the end in mind right so you have to know where you're going before you take the first step so uh what did uh, what did this year look like for you how's 2022 rounding out and where do you hope to take it in 2023 uh, and that's, you know, do you want to, uh, do you want to grow your revenue? Do you want to grow your profit? Do you want just more time? A lot of people don't want to build a bigger business and that's cool too. So there's a plan for that. What does it look like? More money right? or more time. I'm going to draw a clock. Yeah, exactly. Right. It usually comes about one of those things or, or just uh, kind of more enjoyment in your life and business. Right. Well, more money. We've we've always talked about this. You could either sell more houses or sell more expensive houses, right? Uh, sure. You know, depending who's watching, if they're in luxury. I feel like so many markets have become luxury markets in the last couple of years because it used to be like million dollar <laughs> listing. Oh my gosh, there's only a few places now. It's like uh, yes. most of Florida that's near the water will be a million dollar listing, right? And so, how do you up that? Or, like you said, maybe I sell more of these more expensive homes, yeah. which then gives me more time off because I'm one of the things money to look at is your average sale price, right? So like your average sale price, uh, and, um, I always tell the story of Dave Legaz yeah, one year when we were looking at his business and his, you know, in, in Northern Queens, his average sale price was like 380 or something, you know? And, uh, we looked at that and said, Hey Dave, you look, you got all the models in place. You actually don't need to do more transactions because the average sale price in your neighborhood is 800,000. So let's just take the models that you've used to build a, a great co-op business and transfer it into, uh, you know, houses, uh, single family homes. So that's one of the ways to grow your business is to move the needle forward on your average sale price. Um, you know, it's always more, it always comes down to more transactions, a higher average sale price, 
or higher commissions, right? Um, okay. Let's say if he's doing 40 transactions at this price, he could do 20 at yeah. this price and then yeah. take the rest, the extra time yeah. and sit on a beach like yeah. my friend Chris. That's right. So my general rule is whenever you buy more time back in your business, uh, I, I always say take half of that time to do more business and take half of that time to drink more beer or hit more golf balls or, you know, go out to the beach or whatever you want to do. And, then, and it all comes down to leverage. And I think that's where kind of our advanced, our advanced business planning comes into play. Cause sometimes we leave the business planning and we say, great, I've got a plan. I know, I know what average sale price to shoot for. I know how many appointments I need to go. I know uh, to, to go on in order to hit my goal. Uh, but then it comes back to kind of, uh, okay, great. Do we have the systems, tools, and people we need in place in order to get there, right? And so uh, systems is how you do stuff, right? We talk about this a lot. How do I do the business? How do I run the business that I run? And do I need to change anything in terms of my systems? Do I have the tools to support that? A great example is how often do we hear, you and I, constantly, I want to do more video on my business. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. <laughs> I'm going to start doing more video on my business this year. I promise. Great. Um, that's awesome. So do you have a plan in place for that? Do you have the tools and systems that you need in order to do that? And do you have the people to support you? Right. And that's why uh, mentoring, mentoring with people that do video or coaching or, you know, going for a program. I mean, we have a 30, we're going to have a 30 day video challenge coming up where you have to post one video a day for 30 days. That sounds like nothing for people. You know, that's easy for yeah. people, right, that are doing it. But some people fall to pieces when they hear about that. But, but it's I, actually, I think that's, that's a good example, things. though. Like, realtors are so competitive. Sometimes they need a challenge like that and enroll themselves in it and be like, I'm going to do it now because I'm put in competition with other people and I want to win. Whereas if I did it by myself, I'm a person like that. Like, if I did it by myself, I may not do it. But you put me in a group exercise class at the gym, I will die before you beat me. Yeah, it's, I'm, the, I'm the same way, It's uh, which is so hard. And I think uh, that's why when you when you get into coaching, right? So as a solo agent, you can I could I could kind of take it easy, right? When I had when I had teammates and people that I was responsible for, it was uh, yeah, hey, Sherry, more leverage, right? Um, w when you're responsible to other people in a group, uh, it's for me, at least it's easier to perform. And I think that's why coaching works so well. And as a coach, you're like, man, I better have my stuff together. If I'm going <laughs> to, I better have my stuff together also right. in order right. to be able to kind of blaze a trail and set the example. You're always your first, your own first student. But uh, so many people are not identifying or having these business plans are not identifying the things that they need to close the gap, the real stuff, you know? Well, I mean, you talk about making more money. Let's also talk about their expenses and analyzing that, right? Like profit and loss. It's not just what you make. It's it's how much profit or how much you net from it. Because so many agents are just don't even know how much money they're spending every month. It's true. Well, and that's, you know, the first when you when you talk about a business planning session for anybody that's been in business for a year already, they're not brand new. Uh, one of the things is like, how much do you spend on your business? And they're like, well, I don't even know. I haven't even looked at it until now. So um holding those expenses accountable i mean i remember there was a time i tell the story uh every year i was making more and more money in real estate sales and i had no money left at the end of the year and the accountant was like uh hey you got a big tax bill this year you're gonna pay like 70 something thousand dollars in taxes and i was like uh well i don't have any money and he's like what do you do with it and i'm like i spend it you know and he's my account was like did you spend any of it on your business and i was like probably all of it and then i looked at I realized I was having like ten to twelve thousand dollars a month fly out of my bank account for right. things that I didn't need. I was saying yes to everything. I was a young agent. I was successful. People were calling me, "Hey, this thing will get you a lot of leads." Yes, yes, yes. I was like Jim Carrey from that movie, right? <laughs> the yes, then, man. <laughs> yes, it's about holding those expenses accountable. So part of your budget planning is like, great. So this is the plan I have, right? D what What am I going to need to spend? What do I have to spend on my business in order to achieve that goal? And that might include lead generation expenses. It might include uh, employees or staff. It might include um, other other services, um, you know, coaches, mentors, things like that. And you have to factor that stuff in and then watch it as you go and hold it accountable. Don't do what I did and wait till the end of the year until your accountant gives you a big tax bill. Yeah. I, and I think most agents would be surprised if you don't have a credit card dedicated to your business expenses or a business credit card, just pull all of your statements and then go through and highlight 
all the money you're spending, right? I sat down with agents. You were spending eight dollars a day on coffee, right? That's you could free up two hundred forty dollars. Go get yourself a Keurig, make the shit at home, and then you know save yourself the money there. Because they're always like, I can't find the money. Look at where the money's going, and you tell the money where to go. And not to mention, we we kind of sign up for so many things, and with apps nowadays, I've I've been guilty of this. You sign up for the trial. And then you forget, and then it hits you with 50 bucks, and you're like, oh, it's okay. And then, again, and then you don't realize it, and you have all these things that are kind of recurring. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to either get rid of or, you know, analyze it. Is it is it something good for my business, or is it something that I thought would be good, and I never, 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 never used it? Yeah, that subscription model. I mean, everything's moving to subscription models, right? Uh, look, look, my business is also – I have – you know, I have people that are, you know, in, in a group coaching program with me that don't show up. And once in a while, I have to reach out to them. Hey, um, we're going to ding your credit card again this month. And I haven't seen you. What's going on? Uh, so it's there's a subscription. It's a blessing and a curse, right? You really got to stay on yeah. top of that stuff and uh, make sure that the money that you're spending is giving you a return or a multiple. Now, if you take those that eight dollars coffee and you're meeting with somebody that you could potentially do business with every time for coffee, uh, that's differently different than just shelling it out. Uh, just to get you going for the day, like like Jay said, get a Keurig, right? Call it a call it a day. Get a Keurig, save some money. I mean, it's, that gets expensive. You're not kidding. Yeah, totally. Uh, well, even I know a guy that just quit smoking three packs a day in New York City, which there were like seventeen bucks a pack or something ridiculous. I'm like, holy cow! How could you? That that's why the guys on the streets are like, yo, let me get a cigarette because the cigarettes are so expensive. <laughs> you know, like, they use like that. They use that for currency in prison. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's let's talk leverage. What are what are some of the different ways to leverage, and or how do I know I'm ready for it? Yeah. So it's you know most of the people I work with have hit some kind of ceiling, and um, a lot of them are solo entrepreneurs and solo agents. Said, man, I really want to grow my business, uh, you know, but I don't have any more hours left in the day, right? So if you are doing everything that you can, if you're maxed out on time. Uh, then if you max out on time or manpower, then it's, then it's time to look at leverage. And before we look to hiring people, what tools, uh, what tools or things might exist that could really help me get to the next level? You know, for example, we talk about, uh, marketing expenses. Does it make sense to hire a marketing company? Um, or some, some cause how many people are out there saying, oh, I, I want to get into, I want to start building my business doing, and we run into people all the time. Where do you get your business from? Oh, uh, social media. No, you don't. Let's be real, right? So right. the people that get their business from social media are the people that are, you know, marketing at a high level, right? Having calls to action, right? Getting those leads where you can track it. And I think that's a great way to leverage yourself. So if you have a prospecting based business, you can only talk to so many people. That's when you're going out and going for the business. It's time to start looking at some marketing opportunities to attract business. So it's now here comes the work, identifying what is in alignment with the way that I do business. How, how does it work with what I do already? Uh, does it make sense? How much is it going to cost me? Right. So if you are a prospector, you can leverage out your prospecting to companies that will set you up on, on listing appointments. Right. Or you, if you're, um, you can start, if you want to start marketing and you do a lot of video, there are companies out there that can help you craft videos and get it in front of the right people, get the right eyeballs on it. Right. Cause listen, we're all posting uh, well, I got this award from my company and I have this open house coming up yeah, and all that kind of stuff. Listed. Yeah. Yeah. Just I just listed this sold. property to your 5,000 friends that, you know, five of them live in the area. Do you know um, anybody and, looking to buy or sell a home? <laughs> yeah. The picture of the business card. Stop sending me pictures of your business card. Well, uh, <laughs> when, you, when you talk about agents that have no more time, I think it's also maybe analyzing their time. Uh, I like to have them sit down for a whole week and just really journal all of the things that you do every day so that you can realize how mm. much of your time is spent doing unproductive tasks or non-income producing activities. Right? Exactly. We have a, we have a time, we have a, a, an exercise that we do a lot of new clients. I bring them in and I make them keep track of their time. And then we turn that into a color coded calendar, right? So what's the, what's your proposed? Cause once you have a plan, you have my proposed calendar. This is what I, need to do in order to hit my goals and everything's on there from productive activities to you know to fun stuff right and then what does my calendar actually look like how much am i uh, at mercy to the things around me because not everyone's got the same plan for you 
that you do. Um, but that's a, that's a tremendous exercise to be able to keep track of your time. Some people don't, they don't even know where to start. And they're like, wow, I realize I'm just I'm I'm busy, but I'm not I'm busy getting nowhere, right? And uh, so some of that leverage is just. <laughs> freeing up, re stop doing things the way that you're doing them. And it's frees up. I mean, I have, I have people that, wow, oh, since you showed me how I could schedule my calls with clients, instead of just having them call me all the time, I freed up so much time. And to us, it's why, aren't, why isn't everybody doing this? Why isn't everybody doing this? It seems like common sense, but it's really not. It's not common sense. And especially as real estate professionals, we feel like we have to be at the mercy of my phone rings. I got to get it. I got to be on top of everything all the time. We're not controlling uh, our business the way that we can, which actually makes it like being proactive. I'm scheduling, I'm talking to my sellers ahead of time. I'm not getting those phone calls coming in, right? If my buyers know we're scheduled to go out and view homes at these times, um, and this is how you communicate in between, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, worried about getting those things all the time. And we get derailed a lot by those just menial things that come in that get thrown at us throughout the day. We lose focus. Well, and, and I think, you know, like you said, a solopreneur, somebody who you're the CEO of your own business yeah. and you're spending time putting in a listing or writing an offer or organizing your files or doing all these things that, you know, you're, you're doing $8 an hour type work when you should be making a hundred, 200, 300, whatever you feel you're worth per hour and say, would yeah. I pay myself a hundred bucks an hour to put in this listing? Hell no. Mm -hmm. Well, then why the hell are you doing it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it goes back to the 80-20 rule. So, um, you know, I'd show you on a whiteboard. I probably have it written over here somewhere. Like, say, hey, what's your average? Uh, what's what's the average amount of time that a real estate transaction takes from beginning to end if you had a stopwatch and you timed it? It's about 50 hours, right? Uh, just while you're working on that transaction. I mean, that makes sense probably, right? And yeah. when you... When you talk about that 50 hours, the 80-20 rule, about 10 of that is super important, right? So about 10 of that 50 hours is generating the lead, presenting, closing, negotiating, right? And all the rest of that 40 hours that goes into a transaction is transaction management, customer service, right? So and then that's dividing your business too. So you have, I think transaction management and listing management are two of the biggest things you can kind of leverage out that'll save you a tremendous amount of time. When you take a listing, how much time does it take? What do you do? This is your system. What do you do with a listing? Well, I order the sign to be installed. I order the photos. I do this. I do that, right? All these things. All these things, like you said, you know, $15 an hour work, right? So now imagine you had somebody to do that work. So at a 50 hour transaction, say your average commission is 10,000, 50 hours. What's that come out to per hour? <laughs> right. Yeah. Wait. So, a t a fifty hours times ten. So it's ten thousand divided by it's five hundred, right? Ten thousand divided by fifty is five hundred. Mm -hmm, right. It's two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we're good at math, folks. Two hundred, right? So, if yeah. you're a solo agent, two hundred bucks a solo hour. agent, you're you're getting, you're kind of getting paid two hundred dollars an hour per that transaction, right? So, if you follow this math, if you hire out uh, that 40 hours, that's $15 an hour work instead of, uh, instead of netting 10,000, how much will it cost you to pay somebody $20 an hour to do $40 an hour's worth of work? Even if you're going to pay $20 an hour, $800, 800 bucks. Right? Mm -hmm. So that means you net how much at, at a 10,000 minus 9, the 800 you paid 9,200, right? So the small minded agents like, well, I just lost 800 bucks in that deal. But the leveraged agent says I made how much I'm worth how much per hour. They only work that 10 hours. They're worth $920 an hour now at that point, right? So, well, I just brought back 40 on, hours of time. That. I'm worth $920 an hour. We, we had Here's my mic. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I just, I'm now worth $920 an hour. What am I going to do with that 40 hours of time? I could go do more business, right? And a lot of times now we have to develop ourselves as leaders. That's that's going to be part of your business plan too, your advanced business plan. Do I need any leadership development? Um, sometimes we're going to go out there and go to the beach more. We're going to take more vacations. Uh, I mean, I have clients that take off two months a year. That's incredible, right? Uh, and I love that. But everybody has different needs. And uh, that's why it's so important to plan. So knowing what you need to do and knowing how to do it, and then knowing what you need in place in order to deliver on that. And does your plan including, does your plan include 
hiring somebody this year. Uh, maybe you're, mm-hmm. if you're mm-hmm. on target, maybe somewhere halfway through the year, you'll start needing to start to need to entertain a, um, you'll need to entertain a, an assistant or a marketing well, company. Let's, um, yeah. Let's, let's start with that. I think that's, that's a good, um, yeah. I, I put it in the comments, guys. It's va.jmanseminars.com. That will take you to virtualassistantsassistant.com, which actually evaluates different VA companies uh, to kind of give you pros and cons. You can get somebody overseas between 4 to $6 an hour. There's, there's a lot to choose from, but then you also have to train them uh, in your systems and, and everything that you want them to do. Now, there are a couple other options, which we'll go into after Chris talks about Red X. Yeah. Um, a couple other options that are already done for you. Right. And that's all they're doing is they're going overseas and getting the people and training them and, and, and yeah. putting the systems in place and just handing them to you on a platter. But uh, talk about the Red X here, the booster social media reputation. Well, so here's the question you always have to ask yourself, you know, we're on, you know, we go out there and we teach about these things. Right. And I always say you have three options. When you learn about something, you can say, man, that's something I, I want to do myself. And here's how much of it I want to do myself. That's something I don't want to do at all. I want to hire somebody to completely do it for me. So it's like kind of do it yourself, do it with you, do it for you, or don't do it at all, right? So you get to make that decision. Uh, for example, um, I just I was just telling Jay offline that uh, Red X came out with this cool thing. And um, I've been working with Red X for a while with regards to their to their data services. They're for sale by owners, expired, things like that. I work with a lot of agents that have prospecting-based businesses. Um, but uh, they reached out and they said, hey, Chris, we got this new product coming out. We're about to launch. It's called Brand Builder. And uh, since I, you know, I would say I'm not a social media guy. I'm a video guy. I love video. And um, uh, Brand Builder's made it really easy for you to kind of shoot video um, and subcontract it out there. They, you know, they say, hey, uh, you can, we're going to help you develop your four pillars of how you want to occur in your video marketing. Um, we're going to come up, help you come up with a script. And all you got to do is shoot these videos. What Do what we tell you. Shoot it on your phone, no matter where you are. And we're going to edit it and post it for you, right? So it's kind of it's kind of like instead of having a single VA, it's kind of like having a whole team of video editors that just kind of are editing your stuff and posting it for you um, and keeping you on track, uh, which is I thought it was like a pretty cool form of leverage because it's, you know, it's everything. You don't have to. How many videos did you shoot that you didn't get out there? So I don't like these examples. Like, you know, it shows like yeah. what he's showing now. He shot it with his video, then they edit it and they put it out there. And this is a great uh, flow chart here. I like this. Yeah, they do a really good job. Um, they do a really good job for you know for the cost because you and I we know what goes into editing, right? So, and we we're always looking for ways to um, you know get things out there easier. I mean, I took a I took a a tick I I had a TikTok coach for for a month, um, you know, for eight sessions since. <laughs> It's a lot of it's a lot of work that goes into this stuff, um, especially managing all these different social media accounts. What do I post? Where do I post it? I can't get it out there. So now, if you can take all that off your plate and focus on just doing the videos, maybe you'd get more video out there. Maybe it would turn into more business for you. So that's the idea. Don't get lost in all this stuff. Uh, you know, yeah. what can I get off the plate? You know, it's just uh, so that you can just do what you want all the time. Well, and it, it's such a great, because this is one of the biggest time sucks for me too, is like the video editing. And that's why I'm evaluating a lot of different options for me in the, in the future, because I'll spend five hours a week editing video. I mean, it's when I can't watch TV or like when I'm home and it's downtime, yeah. but still it's time where if somebody can see what the deliverable looks like and I can just say, here's the raw video, do it. And it's done. I would, you yeah. know, so much, so much more content would get, po- I mean, I already do a lot, but I could still, we could always do more and, and always be better, always improve. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, I, I'm a partner in a video production company. You know, a lot of people know that Sky Limitless Media. I don't do any of the editing there. John is an editing genius and he does his stuff for people. Uh, it gets super expensive. You know, if you want to shell out a few hundred dollars to edit a 30 second video every time from John, I mean, even John doesn't want that. John's like, listen, come right. to us when you come to us for like the super high end. Look, we, you know, we're producing white label TV shows for people. We're having, we have TV shows in place for people to have guests on. We're doing some cool stuff like that. But for these kinds of things that your constant contact that you're just going to drip out uh, with video, like really, really keep it simple. I mean, there's even so in my business planning session, my business planning workshop, I talk about some apps you can use like BeatLeap, for example, it's like making real quick, you know, we did the social ninja, took some videos, made like a real quick video out there. It's got, you know, royalty free music, boom, you put them out there. It's super easy from your phone. It's fun. 
Uh, that's a thing. How can we make our life easier? And that's what leverage is all about. It's about making your life easier. How much of your week are you spent doing something? J-Man said, I'll spend five hours a week on editing. How? You're like, man, well, I really hate doing what I'm doing. I don't want to do this anymore. Can I get this off my plate? Right? So it's... Uh, <laughs> What, 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 what exists for me to plug into, to leverage myself? Um, and there's so many things out there. It's just, and then also don't get lost in chasing this stuff, <laughs> researching this stuff, getting don't ready to get ready. Go right? chasing waterfalls. Um, <laughs> Red X also has leads that they, that's where they started, right? I mean, yeah. talk about so that they and have, I'm going to um, talk about the other lead lead source. Yeah, they have, yeah. you know, Red X is, um, you know, like a, if you're going to call for sale by owners expired or, you know, you need geo farming for rent by owner, all these things, they have a dialer built into now. Um, they've gotten very, um, very sophisticated with their software. Um, their data is good. You can take notes in there and then it integrates with other things. But this brand builder is not even real estate specific. Um, this brand builder, they started it by saying, let's make video content to drip onto expireds and Fizbos. So imagine this, imagine you call expireds or you call Fizbos. You're gonna make that one of the pillars of your business. And imagine you took that list that you had in Red X, I called all these Fizbos, and now I imported that into Facebook or Meta, right? They Meta now, I import that list that I'm calling into Meta. So now not only people to get a call from me, but now they get a little video ad, a little video shows up in their feed, you know? Hey, it's yeah. Chris, your favorite agent. Uh, you might've got my voicemail yesterday, but I uh, just wanted to give you the you know, top five reasons why Fizbos are not selling in this market for top dollar, right? And they're going to go, Chris, I give up. I see you everywhere. Yeah. Just come sell yeah. my house. And it's, that's a question we have a lot. It's like, how do people, how do you show up everywhere? Right? It's stuck. Look, the data is there for you to take advantage of leverage that data, you know, get in front of the people you should be in front of. Stop posting pictures of your new houses to floss in front of your agent friends. Nobody cares. Nobody Maybe cares about your listing. In. Nobody cares um, about your listing. So all this, it says, so expired starting at 60 geo leads at 60. Why don't, why don't you put your, your link in the chat? Um, um I can't, so. I don't have access to the, um, I, I have, um, yeah. so I can't, yeah, I don't have access to the comments, but on my, on the guest chat there, but, um, they yeah, do, send um, it, send it to just guest chat it to me and I'll, and I'll, I'll post it right It's now. there. Um, so oh. here's what happens. They, um, it's there. they waive <laughs> the, uh, they waive the, uh, the setup fee, which is nice. Oh, um, so is. Waive the setup fee, no contracts. Okay. I just talked nice. to somebody yeah. that's yeah. stuck in a contract with something. It's, it's listen, stop getting stuck in contracts with things. It's 2022 about to be 2023. Uh, by the way, your boy, your favorite coach, Chris doesn't do contracts. Why? If you're not getting results, I don't want to work with you anymore either. Trust me. Right? So it's, uh, we're not, um, everyone's getting sucked into these coaching contracts. Oh, yeah. I signed a coaching contract and they just keep passing me around to other coaches through in the company. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's, um, that's what happens. That happened to me when, uh, uh, back in the day when I was, um, when I, when I was, uh, an agent in coaching. So back in the day when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. That's going to be one of my, right. Do you, do you do anything? Do you do anything that has, where you sign a contract? I mean, the only thing that we do really is we buy stuff for the year. So we save money, which is another strategy. Yeah. Well, here, here's a, and again, we're just going to give you options guys today. We don't want to steer you in any, any direction, but I met this company at the Tom Ferry summit in Dallas uh, a couple months ago and similar to Red X, what they do is all in one here, d depending on the package, of course, they want to steer you towards the more, more expensive one, but, uh, expired listing leads, FISBO leads, FRBO. Yeah. If you're in a market like the sit, you know, Manhattan or places like that where the rentals are really expensive, it's a good, can be a good portion of your business and immediate income, um, neighborhood search data. And then there's a dialer and a CRM built right into it. Uh, that what they do is they actually scrape the leads every day. They cross reference it with the MLS, which I'm, uh, Red X probably does the same, uh, just to be mm -hmm. sure that they're, they're not listed. But this is an option for you so that I know when I did a lot of expireds every day, what first thing I came in, I, I go into the MLS, I pull the expireds, then I cross reference. It, yeah, it was at least 30 to, minutes to an hour, even when I had the system down. Uh, and I would still make mistakes because it's human error. But if they have a system now with technology mm -hmm. and and you just get that and you're ready and you can make calls or have somebody make calls for you. If you absolutely hate 
cold calling. Like if I, I, I would rather jump off the vessel in New York. <laughs> and actually, they closed the vessel because people were jumping off the vessel. I shouldn't joke about <laughs> that. But yeah, um, you can't go up there. But you can hire people to do it. VAs that can do it. Right. Well, that's the thing. Once you set up your systems, like the how you do it, then your tools, what are we using, right? So the system, here's how we call expireds. Here's the tool that we use. We use Espresso Agent, we use Red X. Now you have something solid to hire people into. Uh, so then you hire people, boom, you put them in the seat and you teach them how to do it and everything is done for you, right? So here we have, um, I'm gonna give you two options. I actually had, I had Zoom calls with both of these, these companies this week. Uh, the first one here, again, depending what you want them to do, whether it's just administrative or marketing work, prospecting, which is that they actually make phone calls for you, transaction coordinator, or the executive virtual, virtual assistant. I don't care what market you in, you're in. It'll be tough to find a quality assistant in your office for twelve thirty-five an hour. Anywhere. I mean, I, I think minimum wage where I am in Rochester, New York, is like twelve fifty. Yeah, yeah. Or something fifteen at, to to work at Wendy's. So, I mean, you can't, you can't find that. And these people are already trained. They're trained in the process. Uh, as far as like real estate is concerned, you just have to train them with your specific systems in the market where you are. Uh, I'm not signing up for the newsletter. And then here's the other one called support realty. Uh, and, and I told him yesterday, I had the zoom with them yesterday and I'm like, your name's awful because people are going to think that you're a real estate company, but they're not. They support mm -hmm. realty. Uh, and, and both of them do it like this one does it in either 20 or 40 hour work weeks. Yeah. So if you're a broker, if you're a team leader, if you want to, if Chris and I were in the same office and I just said, Chris, let's get somebody for 20 hours a week and we'll split it. That's okay. They can have multiple mm -hmm. points of contact, um, for this one. Now this other one, the support realty, they do, uh, it's. 40 hours and it's a flat fee almost it's 1980 a month and i remember that because i was born in 1979 and i said well 1979 would be better but uh 1980 i was born in 1980 but yeah oh see there you go the so end the end of 80 1980 a month um and they but they do full 40 hours for the whole month and both of these the people are employees of that company and then you just get an invoice so you don't have to worry about employee status. You don't have to worry about workers comp or anything like that. Yeah. Well, that's the big thing, right? So to have a, so I know we always say subcontract your way to the top. So this is actually a form of subcontracting your employment, right? Uh, where you might not need to have any employees and more and more people are going away from teams. Uh, I've people that are dismantling teams going more in favor of just uh, subcontracting things when they need it. And it's, if you are running a team and you are, you know, if you're making 50, 50 with your team, if you're giving a buyer agent, say 50%. Um, and that's, it's like pulling teeth to get that buyer agent to perform and then all the other expenses and stuff. Why not refer it to a top agent that's out there and take 25% on it? It's what I did. Uh, I referred my stuff out to other agents, didn't have to think about it. Then uh, a referral check came rolling in, which is what I do now. Ref you know, that's a, uh, you have to decide what business do I want to be in? Do I want to run a yeah. team? Do I want to, what, you know, do I want to list and sell? Do I want to get into leadership? It's, there's a lot of different businesses in there. We can't do all the things we can do them all, but we can't do them all. Well, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that really does all those things. Well, right. I mean, would, could you imagine yourself right now running a team? No, <laughs> I just, I mean, think about it. You know, it's like, no, no. And that's why a lot of people ask me like, what, don't you want to be a broker? And no, 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 not at all. Thanks so much. Uh, but, but if you think about it, like another business model, if you're like, you're looking for multiple streams of income is you could hire a VA to make the phone calls. You could hire a company to get the leads. You take those leads and guess what you do? You refer them out. Oh my yes. gosh. You're like that company that rhymes with pillow, right? You got the leads. Here you go. I got a referral for you. Send me 25%. You don't do anything. Well, it's like, I have a, um, I have a, 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 a lender over here that wants to have a call center. He wanted to put a call center together to add value to the top agents he does business with. So um, and then one of my clients works with them and she's like, Hey, you got to talk to Chris. So he started talking to me and I was like, listen, 
I can help you build your call center, create the systems, models, and tools, put everything in place. So let's think bigger. Let's generate leads. And I'm talking to my clients around the country saying, hey, would you would you pay 500 bucks for a, a listing appointment, a qualified listing appointment? And they're like, yeah. So imagine that. Uh, imagine being able to you know, think about it. Somebody, an agent will, a good agent will pay 500 bucks for a qualified listing appointment or give a referral, a referral. fee. Or, and there's yeah. a lot of services out there that charge X amount of dollars a month plus a small referral fee and they generate appointments for you. Uh, so there's all these different, there's all these different opportunities. So out there. many ways to make money in real estate. So uh, so many. Let's let's finish off with with taxes because you mentioned that in the beginning. Uh, you know, if you're Move not Florida. already paying taxes quarterly, like mm -hmm. a good business person should, now would be a good time to meet with an accountant, a CPA. They don't always have to be a CPA, but an, an enrolled agent who might be uh, familiar with real estate and how we work. Yeah. Because it's so different than like, oh, here's my W two and there's that's, that's it. Uh, familiar with what you do because now before the end of the year, they may say, Hey, go spend 10 G's on your business. Cause you need to, cause you need the deduction. And here's the good news. We have all those black Friday sales coming up where you can, all the stuff that you, all the stuff that you use, like, you know, Ecamm and, uh, you know, StreamYard and uh, research, all these things that I use for the year, my CRM, uh, you get a discount to buy it up front. Sometimes you get a black Friday deal. Um, and it's at the end of the year. So now you get, you squeeze in all these expenses. I, let's talk about entities, right? I mean, that question comes a lot, uh, comes up a lot in real estate coaching. It's well, at a certain level, I want to move from being self-employed to being an entity. And what do I do? Do I, do I have a, you could be a single member LLC, right? That's, um, that's kind of like the lowest form of entity where you still treat yep. it like an individual. You don't have corporate taxes. It's a nice pass through your LLC gets all the expenses. You take a draw you pay taxes on your personal on your personal job. Then there's an S corp, right? So some agents, it's particularly if you have a team, if you're going to, if you want to take a salary an S corp is going to be the way to go. So a lot of agents, well, my, my business made 200,000. I took a, I took an X amount of salary. I'm on a W2. Cause I will tell you, it's not easy uh, being a business owner. Um, I mean, we had, I mean, we're had, we had trouble getting a loan. <laughs> yeah. We had trouble getting a loan being in business. We're like, wait a second. Um, look how much money we made, look how much money we have passed like in the bank and stuff like that. But the thing is, is like, well, uh, but you have no W2s. So right. uh, that's, you know, having, um, you know, setting up an S corp to, and then also that solves your problem of paying taxes a lot of times quarterly. Um, Cause I mean, if you're like me, most agents and we file taxes and then we <laughs> pay the big lump sum after we get that big giant bill, man, I better do some extra deals to pay my taxes. So yeah. Those are things. Well, look it's, at it's yeah. Look at if you if that happened to you this year, then maybe do things just a little bit differently. And you could even talk to your broker. I know some agents that just say, "Hey, take ten percent out of my check, mm -hmm. whatever it is, whatever percentage you determine when you're putting together your business plan." I don't want to see it. Put it in a different account. Please don't let me touch it. So that so that every quarter they could they could just make that estimated payment. And what's nice is then when you actually have it due, when you do the estimated payments, you might even might even have actually get a refund. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Imagine you that. Get a refund. Yeah, that's true. It's uh man, it's you know, make sure and that goes back to who's your who. Make sure you have the right people around you, like uh you the right broker, the right CPA or tax professional. Uh the people that will advise you on these things. Cause um don't wait. It's it's easier to be proactive than to clean up a mess after it's done. Uh, it takes a lot out of you. I speak from experience. Um, it's I just, uh, it's man, it's draining. It takes a lot out of you. So just, um, just take our word for it. Be proactive up front and figure out what you need to do. Because if you wait until April, it's too late. Sure. Right. It's like, do it now before the end of the year. So you can claim it for 2023. Talk to exactly. somebody now before, cause if you, if you call a tax person April 1st and you're like, oh my gosh, I have all these tax problems. Can you, they're going to be like, dude, I cannot, I have a lot of stuff to do before the deadline. Uh, you need to get in line. You'll be at the end of the line and then you're going to have to file an extension and like so on and so forth. Now is the time that coming into the fourth quarter, it's uh, do it now. <laughs> Do right it now. now. Have fun spending your money, man. Have fun spending. Listen, figure out it's if you need to spend now, money. Go take business planning. Figure out what tools you need, what technology you're going to use, who you're going to hire, what you're going to do, and see how much of it you could spend now to kind of lead into the next year. And it's going to be a, I mean, um, it's going to be a fun thing to do. Just imagine if you're, especially if you look at the, like different tax brackets. But if they say, hey, 
you need to spend this much because that'll bring you down below a certain threshold where you'll pay a different, a lesser percentage. Now you could go and have a holiday party for your clients, a, a, a nice one, where you invite all your clients, everything's paid for, and that's saving you money. It's saving you yeah. money plus the additional business that's generated from taking oh. care of your people. Good call. Once in a while. No, it's, you know, we, we talk about that with advanced business planning strategies too. Like, you know, getting out there again, everyone's looking, we're, we're kissing, we're kissing again, we're hugging again, we're shaking hands. So let's get together live more customer appreciation events, you know, focus on, focus on your, your business family and um, people want to get out there again. Hi, Jessica. All right, folks. Um, let's see what we're gonna go out. I'm gonna hit you with a little. Mm, 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 mm. Here we go. A little. Oh, wait, son. Uh, no, 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 no